I'm Nathan 42 and in this video I'm going to be 3D printing a fan duct for my Prusa 3D printer enclosure. It's week four of lockdown now, or maybe three, something like that. I want to create some stuff now. I found these things online for a LAC enclosure duct, a fan duct for it. I've ordered the parts online, so they should be with us in the next few days. Okay, so this is the IKEA LAC extractor fan assembly. Uh, the thing on Thingiverse, I'll put the link to this in the description below. Um, but yeah, this has all the important parts that you need. Um, so I'm just going to start printing these out now. It is uh, a couple of weeks later, nearly, uh, since the last part of this video, uh, and a haircut and a, a slight tidy up later. We now have the table down here, and we've got the whole cut in the table already. So I'm going to go ahead and see if we can just assemble the parts for this bit. Okay, so now we have this whole thing assembled, which was actually a lot quicker than I thought it would take. Uh, we have the mesh in there, there's the grill on top. Uh, underneath we have oh, the fan, which just falls out. Uh, and this thing here, which goes on top, and then you're meant to, it's got a little groove in the side of it. So you tighten a uh, cable tie around the outside, put the long tube on it, which I have one over here, one of these things. Sling the other end out the window, and now you have uh, a vent, I guess, on your lac enclosure. I just need to test that, make sure the fan works. So now that I've got this here, uh, I've got this little board here. I've got this of in it was uh, six of them for like seven quid, I think, or something like that. I'm going to plug this in uh, somehow and try and take the voltage down from 24 down to... Uh, 12 which is what the fan is running at so we'll try that now so i've decided what i'm going to do is the lazy man's thing and that is get a chock chock block into this cable here the far right one from this side because uh, if you look on here as you can see at the bottom oh well that did something uh, as you can see here this is the the board backwards so the power supply has these two here it's plus minus plus minus so it goes main board heat bed heat bed in heat bed out that goes out to uh this cable here which is why there is two the two big cables coming in from the power supply on the other side hopefully that makes sense uh, i'm going to do that now and i will be back after not my greatest work but we now have a chock in here it seems pretty stable uh the cables are in the red and the black are coming out here and as you can see there is just another cable coming out so it's split uh, here's the two ends of the cable that's come out these will go onto this board here like so as you can see on the back side it has an arrow so it comes from the in to the out there's the plus and the minus plus minus and that goes that will then go into the other end of this wire which is a fan extender cable which will then go into the fan hopefully
Okay, so I've now soldered the wires to the board. I've got them clipped together here, um, just to keep the board kind of flat, if you know. Um, so now I've plugged the, the printer back in and we're just gonna hope that this actually turns on. Uh, and doesn't set fire to anything. Yeah. I mean this uh the connector here isn't the greatest. It's not like the most ideal way of doing this, but it should work. So we have these connected now. This board seems to be working. Now all we need to do is just the voltage. And I have a voltage meter here. This thing. What we'll do is is we'll connect the, the plus Oh jeez. Easy. Easy. Minus onto the minus, which is there, and then the plus. Okay, it's connected. It says 10.34, which is slightly less than 12. I'll disconnect that now. If I connect it to me, there is no voltage going through me. So that should mean that we have 12 volts going through this printer, uh, through this little box already. So it comes as a 10 volt thing which is close enough to 12 volts i think uh i don't know if we want to change that up again so it is 12 volts or not so i'll probably just leave it but what i have here is i have the fan hooked up it's connected to the cable i've got a little extension cable here this little extension cable i'm going to splice later so that we can connect that directly to the board and then what that means is we've got this little plug here that I can unplug if we want to get rid of the uh, enclosure. We can just unplug this thing and then there'll just be like this little wire dangling down and it's not connected anymore. Uh, just to make sure that we're safe with this, um, what I'll do is I'll put the pin in positive and the pin in negative. Now, <laughs> they, they plugged in the other side very well. Uh, we've got the plug here with the plus and the minus in. I did that already, just to save time. So we'll turn that one. And now... <laughs> it is definitely doing something. So yeah, I'm just going to have a bit of a play about with this. See if it is going the right way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we can get that installed into the enclosure and all bolted up. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a very easy test that you can do to see which way the fan is blowing. I've got the fan out of the uh, little enclosure bit, and we just want to put this in front of it. And, yep, it's going that way. Okay, just, just to neaten this one up, what I've actually decided to do is to solder these two bits in. And then I'll just chip. There we go. Kind of. Looks like a proper <laughs> uh, well uh, soldering pin. Uh, so what I'll do is I will cut these two, I will cut the two on this side, splice them together, heat shrink them, uh, and then we'll have like a pretty nice wire actually to go up to the uh, next bit. But after a bit of testing, I've got the plug here. We've now got, instead of that plug and the, and the, the pins, we've heat shrinked the cables together um, and well, uh, soldered them as well so there's a, a smaller heat shrink and then a bigger heat shrink over the top of that just to make sure that it is nice and safe uh, I have soldered the two pins onto the board I'll most likely do that for the other side as well uh, as I, I quite like this idea um, it means that there is definitely um, a solid way of keeping that <laughs> connection um, there so hopefully I would do, I would do that for the other side. I'll do that off camera because um, that's not any uh, that's not important. But next up, we need to put this part into the enclosure. Now, um, based on what the uh, the 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 thing of us being said, we need some forty mil M three screws. I have them here, um, or bolts. Sorry. So I've got I've got these anyway. I've got some washers there just in case you need those. I've got the caliper. I use the caliper to test the length of this. It's definitely 40mm. Um, if you are ever lost with M3 as a thing, uh, you can 
always just uh, with the the screw. It, it will say like an M340, uh, and that will be, as you can see here, 40 mil long. Wait, there, 40 mil long, or maybe slightly over actually. Oh no, it's uh, it's just because the camera. Um, yeah, it's 40 mil long, 43 including the head. Uh, and then also, if you check the width here, it'll be three mils wide. As you can see very clearly, that is one, two, three. That's why it's an M3, because it's three mil wide. Um, so there's a little interesting tidbit. I don't know if you knew or not. If not, then there you go, today I learned. Uh, now let's get in place for the enclosure. Okay, so for this part, I needed a bit more space. So as you can see, I still have the plastic planes on here or the plastic windows and you have the massive hole here so what I'll do is I'll cut to a different angle where you can hopefully see this Okay, so hopefully you can see the last part. I put these two things in here, and if you look on the other side, there is a tiny smidgen for a, for it to be put on there. So that is cool. <laughs> that is good. And uh, yeah, let's get the rest of these done up. Now we have the tube on, the four screws in. That's not moving anywhere, as far as I can tell. And on the back, it is nice and tidy on here as well. So, and we also have the cable going down, which runs roughly to the full length of the enclosure. All in all, I'm quite happy with that so far. So let's get it all assembled back on the desk and pray to God that it actually does work. Okay, so now it is all back together. Uh, we have the fan up top there, as you can see, quite nicely placed. Uh, the wire coming down the back. Uh, I could eventually tie that or maybe just tape it to the back leg. Uh, I'll probably do that once I do the next upgrades that are coming soon. The cable comes down here. It's not very tidy at the moment. I'm going to probably be printing a new one of these uh, and uh, including a power thing for that as well uh, just to kind of tie it all in together so that it's all working nicely and kind of like as a single cool unit. I don't know how the power supply is going to deal with that, but um, we'll see. I'm pretty sure it should be fine. Uh, if not, I can, I guess, probably buy a new one, which is more power. Not 100% sure on that, but yeah, we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, but for now, yeah, we have this all set up. The fan is currently spinning, as you can tell. This is on, so proves I3 and 3 okay. The tube is at the top, and now all I need to do is hook it up and then throw the tube out the window, and that's it. Um, yeah, so that is a uh, fairly clean way of getting rid of the stuff from this. Uh, hopefully, it's not too bad because, I mean, it's going through that filter. I do need to put the doors back on here, you know, keep it all contained and stuff. But, yeah, hopefully we'll see a reduction in dust in the uh, enclosure. I will report back on that as soon as I can. This has been this video. Leave me a comment if you uh, care to, uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.